Hello, in this video I'll be painting the gene stealer called Aberrants and I'll be trying to get that um, nice transition that you see on the box art between the blue and the purple on the skin tone. So I'll be doing a lot of glazing. So starting off on the pants, we're going to do uh, Incubi Darkness uh, followed by some layering of Thunderhawk Blue. So we're just targeting the pants, the clothing, the ripped off areas. I'm just getting a nice base coat down. And once that's dry, we're going to come back in with Thunderhawk Blue and just layer that on over the base coat. And you see I'm kind of putting this all over, but uh, trying to stay mostly on the higher raised areas and making it a little bit more defined on the edges. And then for the loin cloth, we're going to use corn red as a base. You just carefully come in here and not get it all over the pants that we just painted. And then to do the skin, it's going to need a mixture of a couple different paints. So we're going to do 40% Slanish Gray, 40% Kiss of Flesh, and 20% Ushati Bone. So the easy way to calculate this, uh, two dollops of Slanish Gray. Two full brushes of Kislev Flesh. And then one brush of Ushadi Bone and mix that all together. And then I applied this fairly thin around all the skin areas. Um, I had to go back and do two coats to get good coverage. And after that, we're going to use Cantor Blue on the Gene Stealer arms, the real alien looking parts. And then once we're done with that, we're going to come around with Druky Violet Shade and go over all the flesh areas that we did earlier. Um, you can see I'm applying this fairly heavy because uh, I want it to get in all the cracks and recesses. 
um, and then we'll be layering on top of this once this is all done and dry. And while that shade is still drying, I'll go over with uh, Eliotak Blue um, on the Gene Sealer arms, just to add some more definition to the blue. And with the shade dry, we're going to take Palette Witch Flesh and mix that in with our flesh mixture on the wet palette. And you're going to want to get this really thin because we're going to do a glaze. So um, a really thin consistency, almost like a wash, but just a little bit thicker, um, but not too thin. And then I just go over and carefully apply this all over the skin areas. Um, you can see it turned out a little bit thick initially, so I thinned it out just a little bit and uh, you just kind of have to play with the feel of the consistency um, and it will look much better once it dries. I'm also being careful not to get it in the cracks so otherwise it'll cover up the purple. Um, so I'm just trying to stick to the raised areas um, and the higher areas where the light would be hitting. And once that layer is fully dry, I'll do a glaze again using just Pallid Witch Flesh and once again sticking to the raised areas and just kind of bringing up the higher areas a little bit more, um, making it a little bit more cream colored. And then to start getting some of those blue tints in, I'll use rust gray and make a glaze with that. So getting that in my palette and thinning it down a ton. You can see how much water I'm using to get that consistency. If you think it's thin enough, make it a little bit thinner. It's always easier to add more coats of very thin glaze and the results will be better. So here I'm just focusing on those two shoulders and the areas where I want to add a uh, that blue to um, pale transition. So mainly sh focusing on the shoulders and then also on the legs kind of by the feet and then a little bit on the, the abs. And if it's not opaque enough, um, just keep going over with another glaze and slowly layer on the, the coats until you get the, the nice blend that you're looking for. And then here I'm coming back again with Pallid Witch Flesh, um, a little less watered down, um, just focusing on the very raised areas on his back 
to make those pop just a little bit more. And coming back to his mutated arms, we're going to use Fenrisian Gray as a highlight color and just sticking to the very raised areas and then the edges of the carapace. And then I'll do a touch of Pallid Witch Flesh highlight on the shoulders and on some of the little bumps just to bring out the definition a little bit more. And then to add some more contrast to the jean stealer arms, I'm going to add some Nuln Oil and focus in on all the cracks and crevices and the little like vents and along the hands as well. And then we come back around with Fenris Gray to do a highlight on the edges. Um, this you want to be a little bit more subtle. And then to help blend the legs a little bit more, um, just mixing in some of the blue tones with our flesh tones and glazing it up and just layering over and over until you get a nice transition between the blue and flesh color. And then coming back with the Pallid Witch Flesh Glaze, um, just coming down from the top. Um, so it's a little bit of trial and error mixing between the blues and the skin tones and getting the consistency you like and just getting a nice smooth transition. So um, if you don't like it, just keep layering glazes and it'll eventually come out really smooth. And I just come around the bottom with um, some Fenris Gray for highlights. And more blending. Now to focus on the other details, we'll use Mechanicus Standard Gray on the little uh, rubber pad um, thing over his loin cloth. And then we'll take a lead belcher and go everywhere on the hammer and the chain and his collar. And then we'll take Brass Scorpion for his cult icon hanging from his chain. And then I'm going to take Warplock Bronze and layer that over the hammer to give it kind of a rusted metal uh, grimy look. And 
And my new go-to for dirty metal is taking this siliconum gray contrast paint and just painting that all over the metal parts. I'll be leaving the handle um, pads silver and I'll be going over those with black Templar just to add a little bit of variety in the hammer. So I take black Templar and go over the handle pads. Then we're going to take Carabug Crimson and go over all the red. This will just add a lot of definition to the red areas and shading. And then we'll take Nuln Oil and go over the rubber on his loin cloth and on the chain. And then around the gray belt. And I'm also dipping it on the top of his pants and the bottom um, just to add some nice recess shading and make those lines nice and clean. Then we're going to take Screamer Pink and do the tongue. And then while we have some of these lighter colors on our palette, I'll also go around and just do a little bit of highlights on the face. And then we'll take our blue tones and color the scales on his forehead. And I'm going to take Fenderzine Gray again and mix it up with our Thunderhawk Turquoise just to add some more layering on the pants. Mainly focusing on the raised areas and on the very edges. And then I'm going to come back around with just Fenderzine Gray for a sharper edge highlight and just kind of picking out some areas where the light would be hitting. All right, now for the base, I'm using Armageddon Dunes Technical Paint. And after blasting this with a hair dryer, it's finally done. And I noticed that the hands aren't the right color. Something looked off. Um, so I'm just going over these with Gene Steeler Purple. I'll be layering on some Warp Fiend Grit to add some highlights to the hands. And then lastly, Selenesh Gray for just a very subtle, bright highlight on some of the raised areas. And then we're going to take Agarx Earthshade and spread it all over the base to add some contrast to our dirt. I'm also going to get it on his feet because he's barefoot and his feet would get dirty. And then we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet to do some highlights on the reds. And then Mechanicus Standard Gray on his claws and talons. And then I'm going to take Raghearth Flesh and a dry brush. To make the bass pop a little bit more, add some variation in the tone. And then for the eyes, I'm doing Everland Sunset and very carefully dot yellow in the eyes. And then for the rim, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide to match the rest of my army. There you have it, the finished Aberrant. Um, a lot easier to do if you have a wet palette for mixing up the glazes and mixing colors. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We got. More coming, including battle reports, more painting, and other hobby projects. Thanks.